Our next presenter will be Bart Teague. Bart's a 1984 graduate of McNary Central. Played basketball and baseball for the Bobcats. Bart was a member of the first boys state tournament team. Played college baseball at Union University and is now the executive director of revenue for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please welcome Bart Teague. Good evening. It's great to be here tonight. Um, my home for me and my family is in the Jackson, Tennessee area. I met my wife at Union and that's where we made our home, but, but McNary County will always be home also. So it's great to be here tonight and see people I haven't seen in a long time to hear these great stories. Um, also, like, every, like everyone else who's been up here, I want to say congratulations to all the inductees tonight. Everyone is very deserving. It's great to hear. Uh, your speeches and your stories. Some of you may call the next inductee Delise or Miss Teague or Coach Teague or Dr. Teague, but to me she's Deese, so that's what I'm going to call her through, through this introduction. When I was thinking about what I wanted to say tonight, a Bible verse came to my mind, and that's Colossians 3.23. It says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for men. I believe Deese lives that well and ha has lived it well throughout her life. Whatever responsibility or task or role she takes on, she pours herself into it and pursues excellence. She goes above and beyond to make things the best they can be. And I believe that ultimately that comes from her love for God and love for people. Her talent combined with her drive to excel have led to many successes and accomplishments as a player and as a coach as well, in, as, well as in other areas of her life. Deese was a 1981 graduate of McNary Central and was a three-sport athlete here, playing basketball, softball, and volleyball. She excelled in all three. She played on the very first softball and volleyball teams at McNary Central. Her junior year, she was awarded Most Outstanding Player in Softball. Her senior year, she was All-District in Basketball. And in the three years she played varsity basketball, the Lady Bobcats had a 67-18 and 18 record and were often ranked in the top 10 in the state. After high school, she received a scholarship to play basketball and softball at Blue Mountain College. She had a successful career there as a guard in basketball, and shortstop in softball. After college, she taught and coached at the junior high level for a few years at Bethel Springs, then returned to McNary Central in 1990 as a teacher and coach. Dee served in several coaching roles here at MCHS. She coached her first freshman basketball team to an undefeated season and won the district championship. She served as an assistant coach for the varsity team under coach Jerry Lott throughout the 90s during one of the most successful periods in Lady Bobcat basketball history. During that time, the Lady Bobcats won three district titles, one region title, had three sub-state appearances, and made it to the state quarterfinals and the state semifinals. Deese was assistant softball coach under Bill Wilbanks for three years, then she became the head softball coach in 1993. The program became very competitive under her leadership, improving from zero wins her first year in 1994 to 20 wins in 1999. That year was followed by two seasons with 24 wins. In 2000, the team won 19 consecutive games. They went undefeated in the Sports Plus Tournament in Jackson, a 20-team tournament, and, and of course won that tournament. And that year they advanced to the region semifinals. In 1998, Dees received the TSSAA Female Coach of the Year Award. Also during her coaching years, she started the first softball booster club. She hosted a popular annual softball camp for girls she played a key role in building Lady Bobcat Field in 1996 and 97, and she also initiated the campaign 
to start junior high softball in McNary County in 1999. In addition to her playing in high school and college, Dees played competitive slow pitch softball for 38 years, from age 12 to 50. I call that love of the game. She played for the love of the game, 38 years. She was a gifted athlete and quite a softball player. She started playing with some of the best women teams in the region at the age of 13. She was a very well-rounded player, outstanding offensively and defensively. The first thing, typically the first thing a person would notice about her as a young softball player uh, is her great arm, strong and accurate. She, she threw better than most of the boys around, I think. She also had, a, had great range in the field, mostly playing shortstop. She had very good speed, was a good line drive hitter, had excellent instincts, and was just a great competitor. Some of the most memorable highlights from those years of softball uh, would be when she hit four inside the park home runs in one game. Uh, and one time she and second baseman Cindy Yop turned five double plays in a five-inning game. And then once in a, a really big game with a tie score in the last inning, uh, and, and one out. She scored from second base on a sacrifice fly to win the game. Those are some of her favorite memories and my memories too from her softball days. She won several state championships in slow pitch softball including championships in Tennessee, Mississippi, and Kentucky. Aside from her achievements in athletics, Deese was in the top 10 of her class academically here at McNary Central. And in addition to her undergraduate degree from Blue Mountain, she also has a master's degree in journalism and a doctorate in educational leadership. In 1999, she was honored by the Tennessee Department of Education as the Tennessee Teacher of the Year. And also that year, she was awarded uh, a National Milken Educator Award by the Milken Foundation. She was also a uh, faculty member of the year just this past year at Blue Mountain in, in 2019. You know, I was thinking, we, we all take a lot of things for granted, I believe, just, but just thinking about Deese and what she's meant to me uh, just made me realize what an impact she's had on my life. She's, she's, had, she's really influenced my life in a big way. And I won't go into that a lot, but I know I don't have much time. But as a role model, a mentor, a friend, and just an awesome big sister. So help me welcome and congratulate McNary Central Sports Hall of Fame, did I say it right? Inductee Delise T. We all know what a competitor Brian Brown is, and we also have to acknowledge right now that a record has been broken tonight. <laughs> Danny Day no longer holds the record for the longest acceptance speech. Brian is so competitive that he made sure he beat that. I came here with the cleanest, typewritten, prepared comments that I wanted to make. And as I've sat here, it's been like a walk down memory lane. And I've thought, oh, I need to change that. And I need to add that. And I have the biggest mess up here that you could ever imagine. Because I remember when Stephen came up here, I remember when he was a little boy. I was here working and teaching. And I remember one day when he said, Miss Delise, you can call me Steve-O. <laughs> and I had the privilege of working here with Brian Brown, and with Stacy Null, and with Lucy O'Neill, and with Dr. Martha Glover, and with Lisa Forsyth, and with so many others. 
but also going to school with Linda and Terrell George. And so every person who's come up here has brought back a flood of memories to my mind. I personally don't like the spotlight, but I can't deny that the spotlight has been turned on me right now. But what I want to do is turn that spotlight and point it towards some people who deserve to be recognized. To, first of all, though, let me do what everybody else has done. I don't want to miss this chance to congratulate all of the other inductees and all of these people who've come before us. It's very humbling to be named a member of this elite group of athletes at this school, knowing the caliber of athletes who've come through this place. I also want to express gratitude to the committee, the McNary Central Sports Hall of Fame committee. Every member of that committee spends a whole lot of volunteer time keeping alive an initiative that's worthy to make sure that people who've done great things at the school get recognized. There's one who's extra special to me, and a lot of people probably don't know, that Jeff York was my coach for several years. I had the privilege of playing for Jeff. So Jeff, I thank you and I love you. Um, trusting that he'll get to see this at some point. I want to tell you about just a few people who have impacted me, who have molded me, who inspired me, who poured their lives into me and, and it, into making me who I am. I would want to start with my coaches, but I could not start at the high school level. I would have to go back a little bit because my sports life didn't, ha didn't start when I got to high school, as that's the case of all other athletes, but I would have to give some credit to Mr. Bill Wilbanks, because I played on a junior high basketball team that went undefeated. Little Raymer team went undefeated and won the county championship in 1977. Alan Phillips was our coach. But we would have to flash back to the third grade when Mr. Bill Wilbanks had the foresight to start coaching a little peewee group we, he put those blinders on us, and we could dribble right-handed, we could dribble left-handed, we could dribble between our legs, we could dribble behind our back, we could shoot a left-hand layup. And then Mr. Wilbanks left and went on to the high school here. And Mr. Alan Phillips, Coach Alan Phillips, inherited us. And Coach Alan Phillips did a great job with us, but I think he got a lot of credit that was due to Mr. Wilbanks. So Mr. Wilbanks... I have to tell a story on you. When I was a little girl, when I was in the third grade, Mr. Wilbanks, I believed every word he said. And he said, if you're going to be a good basketball player, you're going to have to be able to use both hands equally well. So the things that you ordinarily do right-handed, do them left-handed. You reach for a cup to drink, drink left-handed. You reach to turn a doorknob, turn it left-handed. Brush your teeth left-handed. He also said, you need to do everything with your basketball. You even need to sleep with your basketball. And I'm here to tell you, basketballs won't stay on your bed. <laughs> I went to bed many a night with a basketball in the bed with me and woke up with it on the floor. But Mr. Wilbanks, I appreciate everything you did. I got to high school and I had the privilege of having some great coaches. I could not stand here having been introduced tonight as a three-sport athlete had it not been for Bobby Randolph, and Denise Brown, who were willing to listen to my nagging and the nagging of some of my friends and start a softball program. We have a rich tradition of softball here now, but it started during my time here. And those were, those were some tough days. We used to have throwdown bases. We played on the high school baseball team with throwdown bases. The base pads are, are 90 feet out there. They would step off 60 feet and throw down first base. And, and it was kind of a tough way to, to exist. But it was the beginning. We played at Eastview, we played at North Park, we played at the Little League field, we played on the baseball field. So what an honor it is to have that great complex out there on our campus. What a, what an, what a blessing. Um, and then I got to play on the, first, the, team's, the school's very first volleyball team. And I'm thankful for, to Sharon Smith for being willing to start volleyball. Then I had the privilege of playing freshman basketball with Mike Kane, and then three years of varsity basketball with Jerry Lott. It was, uh, I had the unique experience of them being able to come back and, and coach on Coach Lott's staff, 
and then to have Coach Lott serve as an assistant coach to me on the softball field. Also, Danny Day was my assistant on the softball field, and Denise Brown, who had been my coach in softball, became my assistant coach in softball. So we are tightly connected around here, and I'm grateful to all those people. God blessed me with great coaches, and He blessed me with people who didn't just have a win-at-all-cost attitude, but who taught sportsmanship and teamwork and concern for our classmates and our teammates, and I'm thankful for that. We love to win. Speaking of that, God also blessed me with a, an amazing friend group. We were competitive, but not like some people are competitive, where, uh, where they're selfish and spiteful and, and mean. I had, and still have to this day, a friend group um, that started in the church nursery, and we came up through Raymer School together. And then when we got to high school, our group got bigger as we welcomed into our circle friends from the other schools in the county. But that nucleus, we call ourselves the Raymer Girls, and my phone's sitting right over there. In my phone is a group text called Forever Friends, and it's those girls. And I'm grateful to them because we had high standards for ourselves, we had high standards for each other, and we made each other better. I had great classmates, great teammates, great colleagues. What an honor it was to teach with the group I got to teach with. I, I completed 30 years of service here in McNary County Schools. 16 of them were in this building, and those were some of the best days of my teaching and coaching career. I'm grateful to Mr. Billy Joe Glover and to Dr. Martha Glover for the role they played in that field that's out there because we had the unfortunate experience during my time here of, having, of losing a player to injuries she sustained in an automobile accident. She was hurt in that wreck and she did not make it. And her family started a memorial fund. But also, Mr. Glover, uh, Bell South wanted to install some equipment on the campus and they were going to pay the school a very handsome amount of money to, to use that plot of ground. And Mr. Glover earmarked that money to start that softball field. And then that family, Rachel Harris's family, established a memorial fund that allowed us to, to, to get the beginnings of, of what we have now. And, and, and that's a huge benefit to this school. I want, to, I want to give special recognition to my parents. I'm so blessed that they're here right now. My mother and daddy are right here at this table. And I cannot adequately express, played. you don't play 38 years and start playing women's softball at age 12 without a lot of support for your parents because I frankly didn't have any way to get to the games. And uh, it wouldn't have been legal if I had. But my parents were selfless and sacrificial. They worked hard but they always had time to get three kids to practice, to games, to tournaments. I don't remember ever being presented with an opportunity to go play in Knoxville or to go play in Timbuktu that I had to wonder if they would say yes or no because they were going to start planning and we were going to go. They always gave us what we needed. They always prepared us and took us where we needed to go. My mom and daddy had three kids within a four-year span, so the three of us were in high school at the same time. The three of us were in college at the same time, and that had to be a challenge. I, I don't know how many miles they traveled, how many hours they spent in route to and at and, in, and coming home from ball games. Um, much like Caroline said, we couldn't do it without the support of the, the family structure. Many times grandparents were there, and aunts and uncles and extended family, but I'm grateful to my mom and dad. They were always positive and encouraging, but they were honest with us. They were not the kind of parents who doted on us and told us everything we did was so perfect. They were really straight up honest, and they always supported our coaches. If we weren't happy with playing time or if we weren't happy with... Uh, maybe the position we were playing, 
we were more likely to hear from daddy that we needed to work hard than that I'll go have a word with him or you know that's just the way they were and that made us all better both parents worked full time but they did a great job of managing our home and I played in on a, up as many as four teams at a time that's kind of complicated we had multiple games on single nights. I remember one night when we had a game at Bolivar. This is not school ball, but a game at Bolivar and a game at Corinth, and it required some excessive speed to get to Corinth, but we made it. Every day when Daddy got home from work, he was confronted with either two or three kids on the driveway with a bat and glove and balls. Just We didn't even want him to go in the house. It was like, Daddy, will you hit us some balls? And he always obliged. They never cared that their yard was worn out from base paths and that we broke a few windows and all of that. We had great friends in the neighborhood who played with us, the Kennedys and Steve Forsyth and others. And what I'm just so conscious of is that I could not, I am, would not be the person I am today were it not for the family and the friends and the opportunities that we had. My parents... When we went on vacation and they found a way to always take us on a family vacation, we always went to a major league baseball city <laughs> and we always took our ball gloves and we always got a scorecard and daddy had us all trained to know how to keep a scorecard. We understood ERA and infield fly rule and all that kind of stuff. My parents have now supported their children and then a generation of grandchildren in their sports endeavors and now they are faithful supporters of great-grandchildren who were on ball fields and ball courts in the county. My brother Bart, he, he gave my introduction, and I'm grateful to him because there are some other things he could have told you. Bart has a scar today because we were trying, we had just moved from the big, from Shawala, the suburbs, out to the big city of Raymer, and we couldn't find a baseball to throw. He was four, I was seven, but we could find a croquet ball and it was wooden and it had ridges in it and we played pitch and Bart was a little fella and I threw it too hard and, and Bart went to the hospital and got some stitches. And, uh, but Bart's always been my best coach. I owe a lot to Bart. We grew up in Raymer on Ballpark Road. So we didn't even have to have transportation. We can just walk down the road. So it was like a daily thing. We loaded up our buckets and our balls and our... Uh, bats and our gloves and we lived at the ballpark. We took stopwatches, we challenged each other, we timed each other. We would watch for men to come down ballpark road. They're going down there to, to have batting practice and we thought it was the coolest thing that they would let us be their outfielders. <laughs> what we didn't know is that they thought we were gullible and, uh, and we just saved them a lot of trouble. But we lived at the ballpark and I thank Bart for being my teammate, my partner in crime, my, he, he made me better. Bart was as smooth a middle infielder as you'll ever find. He had a four-year scholarship, played, union, played baseball at Union University. He also went with Athletes in Action to Guatemala, Costa Rica, and El Salvador on a competitive team that was also a mission team. We would use, he would use the platform of baseball to draw a crowd, and then we would share the, they would share the gospel with the people who were there. And he had a great experience with that. We loved to play this game called good catch. We didn't like to just stand and play and toss the ball. We would throw good catches to each other. And it wasn't a good catch if you didn't have to all out sprint and then dive for it. And So we, we pushed the limits with each other. My brother is a godly man, a great husband, a great father, a great son, a great brother, a great uncle. He's characterized by a sweet, gentle spirit and by humility and wisdom, which you could probably see when he spoke. And then I want to tell you about my sister, if I can. I want to tell you some things you may not know. We were born in the same year. I was born on January 3rd, 1963, and she was born on, a, on November 29th of the same year. So we had a unique, a unique relationship. People probably thought we were twins and I was the one who had failed a year or something, I don't know. But um, when what some people don't know is that M, her name is Emily, we call her M. M was an amazing softball player herself. She played for McNary Central and the first time she stepped into the batter's box and took, the, took a pitch, 
It was a home run, her first at bat in high school. M was a power hitter. Third basemen were in danger when M was at bat. M was a great slow pitch pitcher. And we had the unique experience of facing off against each other on college, uh, college softball field. She got a scholarship to Northeast. I got a scholarship to Blue Mountain. And we played against each other. We have pictures to commemorate that experience. We have pi pictures of her at bat and me at shortstop. We have pictures of her pitching and me at bat. And those are really special to this day. But there's, a, there's an experience I want to tell you about that I'll never forget. I was... My team was playing in a very high-profile tournament in Memphis called the River City Classic. And uh, our family packed up for the day. I had my uniform and all my equipment, and the family was just going to watch. Em was alone, along for the ride. And my team was, high, was very likely to win the tournament. We got there, and there was a team that had somehow come up short and needed a player. And they knew that Em was a, was a softball player. She didn't go prepared to play, so they found her some cleats, and they found her a glove, and they made her their pitcher. And when the tournament was over, M's team won, won the tournament, and M won MVP. <laughs> As an adult, my sister was a teacher, and a servant, and a giver. She was always looking for ways to do good for other people. On August 2nd, two years ago, my sister passed away, as you probably know, most everybody here, after a very tough battle with cancer. I'm so thankful that her four children are sitting right over here right now. God didn't give me, God didn't give me a husband. God didn't give me children. God didn't give me grandchildren. And I will never replace my sister. But I'm so thankful that I get to be in the lives of those four and that they love me enough to be here and that I get the privilege of coaching uh, my great niece and um, that my sister's legacy lives on through them. What's so special about that, and you may be thinking, this is not about, this is not a time to give out your family tree, but here's, here's what I want you to know. No person, no matter what their credentials are, can be considered for this, uh, this honor, this induction. No matter how great they were, unless somebody nominates them. So I will forever cherish this little packet. Because in 2015, it was my sister who nominated me for this award. And I appreciate that. On August 2nd, 2017, my parents lost a child. Bart and I lost a sister. Em's kids lost their mother, and her grandchildren lost their Mimi. We love her and we miss her, but we know that God's plan is always perfect. He makes no mistakes. His timing is right. I'm confident that if Em were given the option right now to come back and be with us, that she would decline. She'd stay right where she is in the presence of the Lord, and she would trust that we're living in such a way that we could anticipate the day when we'll be reunited with her in heaven. She would want us all, our family, our friends, everybody here, to learn from her untimely death that we have choices to make. We must choose that while we are alive, we will live. And we must choose to surrender our lives to God. A choice that will bring joy while we live and will assure us of eternity in heaven. I'm grateful for this honor that I've received tonight. I don't take it lightly. It feels good to be recognized for having used well the abilities with which God blessed me. It makes me happy to have the opportunity to turn the spotlight on some deserving people. But each of us should live in such a way that we would look toward an accolade and aspire to the accolade that we can look forward to someday when we stand before God and He says, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm grateful for the privilege I had of growing up in McNary County. I'm grateful for the privilege I had of being educated at McNary Central High School. I'm grateful for the honor of being named among this exceptional group of athletes. And I'm proud to be a Bobcat. Thank you and may God continue to bless us all.
Well, I think uh, the being inspired is uh, something that we talked about earlier, and certainly we've been inspired. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much.